Thank you for joining us today. My name is Tim Tarmone, Associate Executive Director for Alumni Engagement and Outreach at the University of Maryland Alumni Association. Danny Rubin, TERP Class of 2007, is our presenter for today's webinar, How to Write Emails and Job Applications People Never Forget. Danny recently published a book called Wait, How Do I Write This Email? A collection of 100 plus templates for networking, the job search, and LinkedIn. The book is already used in several high schools, colleges, and even at the Pentagon to teach communication skills to senior level military personnel. By the way, 20 lucky people listening live today will win one of Danny's books. You'll be contacted by me via email by 3 p.m. today, Eastern Standard Time, if you have won one of these books. And if you don't win, I highly encourage you to purchase it. It's full of great information whether you've been writing professional emails and correspondence for one year or for 20 years. One note before we begin, if you have a question you'd like to ask Danny, please type it in the questions box and we will get to as many as we can in the time allotted for this webinar. Again, thank you for attending this webinar and Danny, the webinar floor is all yours. Thank you so much, Tim, and hi everybody. Good afternoon, thanks for letting me drop in on your lunch hour, most likely, and talk to you about writing skills, communication skills, we know they matter, it, that's why you've joined this webinar because you know they're important and all I do is teach people how to write well whether it's for the job search or to build a career the words we use make a huge impact on how others perceive us and impact the opportunities that come our way so today we're going to talk through some real-world scenarios how to write them best and hopefully give you some real practical, tangible ideas that you can go back and apply at your desk right after this webinar. So before I dive into the meat of the presentation, I want to introduce myself a bit further. This is my website. Please note it's dannyhrubin.com. Dannyrubin.com, just a quick aside. Dan, there's another Danny Rubin. I will honestly admit a more famous Danny Rubin he wrote the movie Groundhog Day and it's happened that people keep going to him through email or his website when they were trying to find me so make sure you check Danny H Rubin on Twitter in my email and on my website because otherwise you're going to go to the wrong person it's a great movie I love it and I wish I could claim credit but he and I are different people so this is my website I have a really large blog now. I've been working on um, this platform for four years. And briefly, I started my career as a TV news reporter for a CBS affiliate in Hampton Roads in the Norfolk, Virginia Beach area. I have my master's from the University of Maryland in the School of Journalism. And they helped me land my first job, which put me on my path for my career and led me to the work I'm doing now. So I give Maryland a ton of credit for where I'm at and what I'm doing, and I love that I can share what I know with other Terps. So my blog is full of uh, practical writing instruction. I encourage you to go to the website, you know, at, you open a browser tab or do it later, and just check out all the different writing guides that I have uh, sitting there for you, networking, job search, LinkedIn, public speaking, phone calls. I have a lot of stuff in there, and I hope you'll use it as a resource. I also want you to know, and I'll I'll bring this up again at the end, but I have a newsletter called The Template, wouldn't you know, because I'm all about practical writing instruction and writing guides, and it comes out every Monday morning. I'm actually not going to do it this coming Monday because of Rosh Hashanah, but just know that every Monday morning it comes out, 7 a.m., and it includes some, some free email templates and some editing, tr editing hacks to just be instantly a better communicator. Also, I include some news links that will impress your coworkers. You know, things happening in the news right below the main headlines. And if you walk into your staff meeting on Monday and know about it, you're going to look like you're in the know and they're not, and it gives you an edge. So I'll explain this further, but I encourage you at the URL below to subscribe once a week, no spam, just really practical information to make you smarter and help you set yourself up for success every single week. Now, as Tim said, this is the book that I put together uh, just about a year ago now, last October, 
And this book came out of several years of doing one-on-one -on -one career coaching, blogging a lot, looking at my website traffic. If anybody's a blogger out there or has a website, they know the power of Google Analytics to understand the audience and what people are really looking for. And I saw overwhelmingly what I was doing that had the most traction were writing guides for the business world and for the job search. They had the most interest far and away, and it was clear to me that what the market lacked and what people were looking for is a comprehensive guide to how to write well in the business world. So that's what I put together. I self-published it. I spent a whole another hour telling you about that whole process of making my own book, but I worked hard on it. 18-month process, and here it is. And some of you will win it um, through a raffle, which I'm grateful Tim was able to do that. And it's just a giant textbook for the real world. How to write over a hundred situations that we all face as we network, build relationships, apply for jobs, send thank you notes, talk on the phone, send cover letters, which is something we're going to talk about today. It's just everything in the kitchen sink. And I hope that you'll pick up a copy and keep it in your backpack, keep it on your desk, keep it close as a, re a handy reference guide as you grow in your career. Now, what are we going to cover today? Three big ticket items that we all face in the business world and my approaches to each one because they're unconventional, nothing that's going to make you look out of sorts. On the contrary, it's going to make you stand out for all the right reasons because everybody does what you're seeing here a similar way. We approach these situations the way we've seen it done in the past. And the problem is the reader or the employer or the audience starts to expect what you're going to do. They assume what you're going to do. And you have trouble separating yourself from the pack because you get lumped in with everybody else. And you've worked too hard in college and even in your, your career to be put in a pile with everybody else. And there are simple strategies for LinkedIn, for your cover letter. I'm really excited to share with you my approach to a storytelling cover letter. It's unlike a cover letter you've ever seen. You can't Google and find this as sort of like, what does everybody do with cover letters? You're, I'm going to show you an approach that will put you head and shoulders above the competition when uh, an employer is scanning a resume and cover letter because yours is so much more visual and compelling. And lastly, I'm going to talk about some smart outside the box questions to prepare for a job interview. Again, everybody asks similar questions or worse yet, doesn't have questions prepared. And you're going to have some next level questions written down in front of you or in your head if you don't want to you know, if you can kind of keep it straight and memorize, but great questions that are going to <clears throat> turn heads and <clears throat> make the employer say, now hold on, who is that? That's somebody to get to know further. So that's what the next, you know, 30, 40 minutes are going to look like. If you have questions throughout, please write them in the chat box and I will address them. Feel free. This is, you know, interactive and I want to know what you're thinking about. If something doesn't make sense to you, certainly send me a quick note and we will talk it through. Now, this is my mantra for every writing situation in the business world. Job search, growing into a career, everything. When you write well, you open doors. I can't stress that enough. Writing an email or a job application or a presentation, an RFP, an application, anything you're writing is usually the first impression someone has of you or your team in the business world. So how you write and the words you use are everything because you need that opportunity to get in front of them in person, show them your passion, show them what you're really all about, or to get on the phone and let them hear from you. But it all starts with the written word. And that's why I, I focus exclusively on our communication skills and our writing skills because the words we use matter and when you write well, you do open doors. If you want to tweet anything I'm saying or follow me, my Twitter handle's in the bottom. Danny H. Rubin, remember again, not the Groundhog Day guy. I am Danny H. Rubin. All right, let's get into the first part of our webinar, a powerful LinkedIn profile summary. Now, many of you, I assume, are on LinkedIn. You may have a profile summary. You might not. But what I've observed is that people don't 
do in that space. I'll see one sentence descriptions, I'll see three or four paragraph descriptions, I'll see someone just drop a big paragraph of their job skills. No one knows what to do in that space. And I look at that space as an introduction to getting to know you and to entice somebody to read your entire profile, like all the way to the bottom. So this is sort of like you greeting them at the front door and welcoming them in, like a Walmart greeter or Costco, right? You want to like say hello at the door, let them in the store, and let them wander around. And this is the, the big idea behind an effective LinkedIn profile summary. You know, there's nothing more beautiful than seeing a person be themselves. Authenticity. We hear that word a lot. We know that a lot of us on this webinar, millennials, we know that we want to see other people be real, be honest, be authentic. Well, we should be doing the same thing ourselves. And we don't want to hide behind fancy sounding rhetoric or just a bunch of job bullets that really don't allow you to show your personality or your passion for the work you do or the work you hope to do if you're watching this and you're set to graduate. Letting your guard down, being human, that's what makes you so compelling if somebody is reading this and might want to hire you or someone's reading this and may want to work with you or work with your company. This profile summary will work on all levels and make you appealing no matter who's reading it. Now, at the same time, this section requires brevity and critical thinking. You need to explain what you're about and the impact you make on others. This is a real central tenet of my book and my the work I do. Thinking about other people at all times. Showing that you're curious of others, you're interested in making an impact on others. You're not just coming around to talk about yourself. You're showing that you know that through the work you do, you're making you're adding value to someone else's life because that's such a refreshing way to approach communicating in the business world and again managing expectations. The employer is expecting you or you know uh, college admissions or whomever's reading or seeing your applications expecting you to really just focus on yourself. Say me, 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 me. I'm really smart. I've done all this great stuff. Are you going to hire me? Are you going to bring me on? Is this going to happen? And while you do need to share your ability and we get into that, you also need to show you're focused on them and how you're going to add value to someone else's operation. So I put the LinkedIn profile summary in three steps. At the end, you'll see it reads in about 30 seconds. It's really brief. It's the right amount of time that someone's going to give you to sort of for you to teach them who you are, and then they feel like they're revved up and they're ready to continue learning more about you. So the first step is, in a nutshell, what are you known for? What's your identity? And if you are in the work world, how does your work help other people? Now what I've done here, just because I know there may be some students watching and, and also alumni, I've provided templates here and examples for a college student and a working professional. The example here is for someone who is either majoring in computer science and, and math or someone who's working in um, information security and IT. Okay, so this is sort of the, this is right out of my book. These are the examples. So for a college student, your first who are you line is I'm a junior at Big State or Maryland or if maybe you're coming from somewhere else who majors in computer science, minors in math. And for the working professional, this is the opening line because you're already in the job, you're adding value. Here's how you sort of kick off who you are. Every day I protect sensitive information on thousands of people from hackers and cyber attacks. So for the student, you're in school at this place, you're, this is your major, this is your minor. When you're working, this is the sort of the essence of my work. This is what I do every day to make the world a better place. Okay, that's the lead. Also, I want you to notice just as a quick little side note, college majors and minors are lowercase as well as the words major and minor. I do a lot in the book with um, editing guides, capitalization, even exclamation marks and when we should use those. There's a lot of words that are commonly capitalized that are actually lowercase. And when you learn these little minor things, they make a big impact, especially if the person who's reading your application or reading your LinkedIn profile understands grammar and capitalization and style rules, you will win them over even more by showing you understand some of these basic elements that many of us do incorrectly. All right, now step two, what do you do? 
Now we're going to take that opening line, we're going to go deeper, but we're still staying within 30 seconds, okay? We're not doing three huge paragraphs on everything we've ever done, we're going to ha but we're going to include specific details for you know, the working professional, the title and company, what you do at the job, how your job helps people, of course, and any specialties or areas of expertise. And I'm going to show you in two different templates here how that looks for a college student and for a working professional. I know this is a lot of text here, but just stay with me. For a college student, we're going to say, you might say I'm a tech geek because I spend a lot of time in the school's computer lab. That's where we learn to deconstruct laptops and build them back together. I'm vice president of the Campus Computer Club, and I love to pick apart a motherboard or hard drive and help people with their computer challenges. Okay, So that for the college student, giving some detail about what the person does on campus, clubs are involved in, but being very specific about what they do within that organization. Deconstruct laptops, vice president, pick apart a motherboard, and then of course, help people with their computer challenges. Now for the working professional, as an information security analyst at Acme Hospital System in Sacramento, I manage the day-to-day -day flow of information into and out of five hospitals and two emergency centers. With a focus on database management, my job ensures critical computer systems, medical files, and patient history remain active and never fail. My team and I stay updated on the latest trends in information security to not only keep Acme Hospital systems safe, but also on the cutting edge. So let's jump back one slide and just walk through. We talked about title and company, what you do on the job, how your job helps people, and specialties. Okay, so here we talk about being very specific. We don't just say a large hospital system. There's a, a huge part of the game with communicating effectively in business is to quantify. Tell the person exactly how much, how often. Five hospital systems, two emergency centers. Now the reader can visualize the scope of the work. Specific skills, like we include database management. You may be familiar with applicant tracking systems in the job market or recruiters who sift through and look for particular key terms in LinkedIn profiles. You including specific skill sets, software perhaps, certifications, so that if somebody is looking for someone with those exact specifications, you will come up. Being vague in the business world gets you nowhere. And then of course, we include at the back end of this paragraph, staying up to date on information security to keep the hospital safe and on the cutting edge. So again, always thinking outwardly about other people and the, why the work you do matters for, on, for someone else. Now, the final step. I told you we're not going to be too long-winded with this. We have the intro, the, par the, the sort of the details paragraph, and now a closer sentence. I call it bring them home. By now the reader knows who you are and what you do. Now you finish out with a closer sentence. It's kind of like your opening line where you sum up your mission as a working professional or as a college student. What are you passionate about, and how does that passion help others? This is sort of like wrapping you up, so it gives a nice conclusion to your profile summary, and then as a natural segue to make somebody say, wow, what an interesting person. I know who they are. I know what they care about. Now I want to get to know them better and go through their uh, job experience, maybe hear from some of their testimonials, see who's endorsed them for this and that. But this is your intro, and you want to end on a, on a in a strong way. So, for the college student, when I graduate, I hope to find a job that uses computers and the latest technology to make the world a smarter place. Okay, so again, they are saying, once I leave, I hope to use the skills I've gained to make the world a smarter place. I don't have the job just yet, but I've shown you how much I have focused my energies in this space while in school using practical, very real-world examples, and I'm going to take what I've learned and apply it in the business world. Now for a working professional, basically the question you need to ask yourself is, why do I get up every day and do what I do? Why does it matter to me? Why do I care? The line I put here for this fictional person, a hospital never sleeps, the same goes for IT. If everything runs smoothly and nothing suffers a glitch, then I know I did my job. That's like this person in a nutshell. You know, who are you in a nutshell? If you had to put why you love your job, and I hope you do, 
or at least can you know get through the day and do what you do? Why do you value the work that you do? Why does it matter to you? Why do you care? See, this kind of line, it's not something you'd typically see in a LinkedIn profile summary, but it's so, I've used this word before, refreshing. It allows people to get to know the real you. And if somebody is checking out your LinkedIn profile summary or your profile maybe to do business with you or a recruiter is coming around trying to learn more about you, this makes you so approachable and real people feel like they already kind of know you even though you've never officially interacted, whether through email, phone, or in person. This is a great introduction and it does a lot of sort of selling for you and marketing on your behalf. Now before I get into the next section on the storytelling cover letter, if there are any questions you can feel free to write them in the box. If not, then Yes, people will share the slide. Yes, I'm happy to, Tim has asked if people are willing to uh, share, if I share the slides with you. I'm happy to do that. I will give these to uh, Tim afterwards. He can send them out. So you'll have this slide presentation. Feel free to use it. I encourage you to keep it handy and open it up and just refer to these uh, templates as you create what we're doing today. So absolutely, thank you, Tim, for asking that. All right, let's move ahead. This is um, a topic I love to talk about because it is a, and I use this word on the front of my book, game-changing templates. This is a game-changing technique, and I want you to watch closely at what we're doing here because the age of the traditional cover letter has come to an end as far as I'm concerned. You know, I don't know if you're able to, to type in the chat, but, you know, if you can, on a scale of 1 to 10, how annoying is it to, have to write cover letters? Let me let me see from some of you if you're willing to share on you know one being um, let's say ten being the most annoying. How annoying is it to have to always write a cover letter for job applications? And I'll continue through and we'll see if anybody writes in because I know that majority of us do not like to put together cover letters. They're extra work. We feel like they don't make a difference. Nobody likes to read them. Why am I messing around with this? Why can't I just send my resume? The truth is, cover letters, the way we typically do them, are a lot, a lot of a wasted effort because they don't allow us to stand out. The way I'm going to show you today will allow you to completely turn the tables and make the employer say, who is this person? What a dynamo. I really want to get to know them. All right. This is the way every cover letter starts or something like it. I know we've all written cover letters like this. We know what it looks like because this is what we see. Hi, my name is blank. I'm interested in the position of blank. And the employer says, I've seen this same cover letter a thousand times. I'm moving on. Because what we typically do is we take our resume and we put it in paragraph form and just recap our experience in a cover letter. It's duplicative and it doesn't get us anywhere. The person just scans it for five seconds, thinks they know everything they need to know, and they just turn it over and they go to the next person. The storytelling idea has three advantages right out of the gate. They're going to catch the reader's attention. Better yet, they're going to show and prove your ability to do the job in question. And lastly, they're going to leave a lasting impression. No one else is going to tell a story in a cover letter, and you are going to be in a category all by yourself. Plus, you don't have to say anymore, basically, please believe me that I am a leader and that I'm driven and dedicated. The story will say all of that for you. You don't have to beg someone to believe you have these soft skills. The story has everything you need to explain yourself and it's going to do it in a really dynamic way. Okay, so I have three parts to the story, I'm sorry, six parts, three on this screen, and I know there's a lot of text here, but just stay with me because I want you to really understand, this is coming right out of my book, just plopped it in here because I want you to understand how this goes. Part one, forget about this opening line, hi, my name is, that's over, that's done, you're not doing that anymore because it doesn't work. Part one, we're going to open with a line that places readers into the story. Okay? We're going to, it's almost like an intro to a novel. You just want to grab them right away and make them say, hold on, 
what's going on here? Something's happening, I'm interested. Then part two, we're going to tell the story, beginning, middle, and end in about a paragraph, using specifics to make, to make things stand out, using numbers like we just talked about, actual locations, job titles, being very specific, adding color and life to the story. And part three, which is about two sentences, we're going to demonstrate how the story applies to the job. So we're going to say, I told you the story to prove to you I'm the right fit for the job in question. So then the employer is going to say, oh, okay, now it makes sense. I know why they just did that. So the story is not just floating out there and they're like, what kind of wacky creative writing are they trying to pull here? It's really targeted. There's a method to the madness. And when you see it all on the page in a minute, you'll understand. Okay? Now, part four. A huge part of building relationships. And this is a grade A interpersonal skill. Showing that you researched the company. So using very specific language from their website about what they've done that you find notable. And also helping them understand that you know, you know sort of where they fit into the market, maybe some of their challenges as a business and their opportunities. So you're coming at them with a level of understanding about their work that most people just would never think to say. One, it's an ego boost because people like to be shown that someone else values what they do. It shows that you did your research and it shows you have sort of context and perspective and you're thinking about more than just yourself. You're showing curiosity in other people and that makes you appealing to them because you're not just talking about yourself, which you are doing, but you're also sharing the, sharing the love and saying, I think what you do is great. And if you want to work at a company, you should know what they do and you should find the work great. Part five, we're going to touch on a few more of the qualities that the job description lays out. We all see at the bottom of job applications, the company will just list like eight or nine soft skills, right? Can work independently, creative thinker, self-starter, motivated. They say all that stuff. You've already shown that you are those things with your story. Now you're going to touch on them a little bit more to kind of round out the cover letter. And at the very end, part six, you're going to mention your story one final time to bring the cover letter full circle. You know, this is an idea that came out of my career in journalism. And if there's any Maryland journalism grads on here, you will appreciate and understand what this idea is all about. We tell stories of people to help us understand a situation. And we often see, how many times have you seen the news where a story begins with a person, the reporter pulls back, tells a situation, and then ends with that same person. There's like a nice beginning and end that kind of wraps up, book ending it, they call it in journalism. And we're going to do that in a cover letter because it's the same principle. Okay? All right, enough explanation. Now I want you to see what this cover letter looks like. And let me just say, as you get into this, in the, in the end, it's about three quarters of a page on a Word document laid out, normal size everything, three quarters of a page. So we're not creating a two-page biography or autobiography, okay? Don't think that's what we're doing here. It's the same length as a typical cover letter, but it's something people want to read start to finish. So here's part one. I looked up at the sky and couldn't believe it. Storm clouds. Now, I know this is not like a cover letter you've ever seen. I understand that. But right away, the employer, think of the employer's perspective. They have a whole stack of applications, or they're going through their computer, they're just going through one after the other, and they're all, hi, my name is, hi, my name is. And yours is like, I looked up and couldn't believe it's storm clouds. And they're saying, hold on, what is going on here? Now you're going to get into your story. For months, my team and I prepared for the annual big nonprofit association charity bash in which students throw a party for 24 hours straight and raise money for children's hospitals. We had the campus quad reserved, the event ready to go. Then out of nowhere, a huge thunderstorm threatened to ruin everything. As team leader, I organized our group to take the dance party inside the gymnasium, notified all participants about the location change, and worked with an audio-visual tech to ensure the music played indoors. Within three hours, we had the big nonprofit association party back on track and in the end collected $11,000 for charity, the most we had ever raised. This is a strong intro to a cover letter. And I, I forgive me, I meant to say the job in question is a sort of um, 
an entry-level marketing coordinator for a nonprofit. So they're looking for someone who can handle event planning, and this person told a story about event planning at the college level. Now notice the details that I've shared here. 24 hours straight for the party. Within three hours had the party back on track. $11,000 for charity. Showing very specifically how the person had a problem, worked through it, overcame it, describing exactly how successful they were. $11,000 the most ever. The story has a clear beginning, middle, and end. Great detail, shows a clear problem, a clear solution. And then wrapped up in this story are all those soft skills, right? Motivate, motivated, dedicated, driven, uh, um, can think creatively, can work uh, with a team as well, self-starter, just all those things that we know we need to share. They don't have, this person doesn't have to say it because the story has, it's all wrapped up in one. So I want you to just Really look at this story here and understand that this is the way you sell yourself. You have great experiences, whether in school or in, on a job. You are picking up experiences where you have tough challenges all the time, big hurdles that you've overcome. And if you don't share those stories and don't leverage those experiences, then you're wasting the opportunity. And you're basically throwing away all that hard work you did because it's the hard work you've done that's going to get you to that next level and open that next door. And that's why the writing matters so much. Now, the part three is where we basically say, I told you this story to prove I'm the right person. My name is Jennifer Sutherland. This is all fictitious, by the way, but from my book. I want to be your next program associate. I know it can be challenging to organize, plan, and execute big events. And I'm ready to work hard for the name of the organization. Issues and setbacks can appear without warning and it takes determination to work through them. So they said, I, I just told you this great story so you know I'm right for this. I have had event planning challenges in my past. I've knocked them out of the park. I'm gonna do the same thing for you. How can you argue against this person? You have all the proof you need. Now, part four, where we show the curiosity. As I researched your organization, I learned a great deal about the inspiring work you do with the Little Nonprofit Association and its annual fundraising walk that supports cancer research. I also read about challenges in the nonprofit sector. For people to donate today, it's essential to reach them in meaningful ways, particularly online. I've, I have experience building community and generating buzz on social networks and would do my best to bring fresh thinking to the table. I want you to notice the first sentence here. The person actually went to the website found something specific on their website that stood out and then set it back to them. It's not enough to say, I went to your website and you do really inspiring work, period. You can say that and never have visited the website. It's an empty gesture. But when you go one level deeper and you give them an actual example of something that's notable to you, all of a sudden you're super authentic because you honestly went to the website, you read about something, you internalized it, you're saying it back to them. That's a next level move that many people would never think to do at 25, 35, 45, whatever. It's just a different frame of mind and that's how you get people to kind of come on board with you. And again, in the middle here we talk about you've done some research, you understand the market, you know where companies you know, can challenge and succeed, and you've been working hard in these spaces already to overcome those challenges and help organizations find success. Now, part five, just going to touch again on some of these soft skills that we know the company values. Uh, right here I have, you know, I want to take my hands-on skills in social media and event planning and put them to use. I enjoy being part of a group. I know how to multitask. I always finish what I start. I, I'm also curious. I want to learn from your team as well. This is especially effective if you're a recent grad or in your early 20s, mid 20s. The employer doesn't want you to come in there, you know, guns blazing and like you know everything. And you don't need to be taught. Just put you in front of a computer and off you go. That's not appealing. People want to know, particularly if you're a younger employee, that you can be taught. You can be molded. You're not. You're, you're open to mentors and learning on the job. Certainly you want to have some skills coming in and obviously the soft skills too and the work ethic, but you're open to being molded and letting other people show you the ropes. That's appealing. I think it's a, it's a strength to say you have, a, you have stuff to learn, not a weakness. Now in part six, we're going to wrap it up with from where we started. 
The Big Nonprofit Association Party taught me the importance of quick decisions and staying focused in a hectic situation. I'm ready to bring the same work ethic and energy to your organization. Thanks so much. I hope to hear from you soon. So we're gonna we're just ending where we started. Once again, reminding them that I just gave you a perfect example of why I'm an ideal fit for this job. I've already done the work you're asking for. I did a great job with it. When things got crazy, I handled it with poise, and I'm going to do it again. Then you sign off, and out you go. And coupled with a great resume, and in the book I share how to really beef up your work experience so that all the work you're doing really jumps off the page, coupled with a strong resume, this cover letter is dynamite. And they're going to say, this is somebody we at least need to bring in and talk to, even if you know, they already had somebody in mind and they were about to wrap up the decision and you come in last minute and they're like, hold on, we got to talk to this person. And we can all write a cover letter like this. Any one of us can tell a story that's compelling. We all have those experiences. You think right now when I, when I do these like in a workshop, in a room, I ask people, can you think of a time in the last six months, whether in the classroom, at, at a club or an internship or a job where you had a big challenge and you maybe with a team, but you working hard overcame that challenge. Can, can you think of that? And, and without a doubt, people raise their hand and say, I know, I know, there was this one situation, there was this one situation, this, here's what happened, here's what happened. I said, great, that is your lead. That's how you sell yourself, how you market yourself. This is how you're going to make people pay attention to you, respect you, and believe that you are as talented as you claim to be. Now, true to form, I want to tell you a story right now of somebody I worked with in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and it involves a thousand cell phones and a chicken plant, okay? Do I have your attention? Pretty weird, right? Let me tell you what happened. I was helping this young lady maybe a little over a year ago, and she was working in an HR capacity at, as a temp, temporary job, at a really large a chicken plant on the eastern shore of Maryland. Okay, so she was in a job that she wanted to find a full-time job, you know, desperately. She couldn't find one. Her resume kept falling flat. Nothing would work. On her resume, she had a bullet point that said, within the job, she updates company cell phone records. That was what it said, essentially. And I asked her, what does that mean? Tell me more about that bullet. She said, well, actually, what they had me do was update the cell phone records for a thousand company employees. Many of them wouldn't answer me over email or phone. I had to go across the campus and find them on foot. It was really hard. I mean, a thousand people. It took three months to do this, kind of overhaul their cell phone systems. It took three months, but I got the job done. By the end of it, the CFO of the company, a large company, uh, gave me like a special congratulations and I got a raise. And I said, wow, all you said on your resume was update cell phone records. And her cover letter, true to form, just sort of rehashed, put her resume in paragraph form and didn't do anything for her. So what we did was we redid her cover letter and we led the cover letter with that story of how she had a huge challenge, didn't know how she'd do it, somehow worked hard, made it happen, and found success. We wrote that. She started sending off applications. I checked in about six weeks later. She had received three callbacks, two job interviews, and a job offer, and was about to move to D.C. to take a job in an HR position at a law firm. Now, of course, I don't guarantee this works every single time, but you can see the impact that it was the same person, the same person applying for jobs, but the way she described herself was so much more compelling that right away people wanted to talk to her because they want to hire someone who's going to work that hard. And through that story, they knew. And this is the quote that she uh, gave me. Storytelling made my experience pop on paper, and I think it's a major reason I caught the attention of employers. Stories do the selling. They're like this magical potion that instantly makes people want to get to know us more. That's why we watch movies, watch TV shows, stories, stories, stories. And the same rules apply in the job market. Now, the last part I want to cover are four smart questions for the job interview or an informational interview. Again, you know, people come in with the worst thing you can say is I don't have any questions. That's just like, do not do that. Everybody listening, please do not do that because 
it's kind of a letdown moment. The employer wants you to do something, show you're engaged somehow. Don't say, oh, no, I think you answered everything. No, they didn't because the questions that you have, they probably didn't touch on yet. Or you can ask about benefits, vacation time, even company culture. While those are all fair questions and you're not going to be penalized for doing them, it's what a lot of people ask. And your goal here is to be different every single step of the way. So you need to go a different route. And I have four questions here that you may not have the chance to ask all four, and that's fine. I understand. But what you need to do is come prepared with them. And I do encourage you to write them down. Have notes in front of you and be ready to, to talk about them. Here's what they are. Here's the first one. I call it the background check because people love to talk about themselves. And if you have a question about the boss's career, they're going to have a huge ego boost you're going to perk up. They're going to say, "Wow, absolutely. Let me let's talk about you know me for a second. Like they would, they'd probably do it all day if you let them. In this case, the example is for somebody going after a marketing position. So the question could be, "I noticed you started your career in marketing for Ringling Brothers. What was that experience like? This is nowhere near asking about your job. Okay, understand what's going on here. You're building a relationship. You're trying to build rapport, trust, a sense that you're genuine." And you want to know what they're all about. It's a disarming move that turns it from a job interview into a conversation. Okay, so the way to find it, it's sitting right there in plain sight. LinkedIn profile, website bio. Go read up on this person. Even Google their name. See if they've written any articles or been featured in any articles. See what they've done. And then when you're right in front of them, tell them what you've learned. Ask a question about their career. It's such a game-changing move. Right away, they're going to like you more. Now, number two, the office insight. We've already touched on this in the cover letter. Every company has a website. You need to read it before the interview. Read about past and current projects, staff bios. Get a sense of the office culture. Understand what they're up to, their, their latest successes. And then ask a question about what they've been up to. I read several of your recent press releases. I see you're making a big push to carry more gluten-free products. This is for a, a grocery store per se. How big is the demand right now for gluten-free? Okay, so you're showing that you went to the website, you've read up on it, you can spit back examples. Again, the worst answer in an interview is when they say, have you been able to check out our website? And you say, oh, you know, I meant to. I'm going to do it after the interview. Yeah, you'll have plenty of time to do that when they're not calling you back because you have to be able to say, yep, I checked out the website. I was reading about this or this. I actually had a question about this. Wow, another next level move. And everybody else is talking about, you know, how much vacation time do I get here? Or, um, you know, just like very HR related questions, sort of like the day to day job. And you're thinking about something totally different, which is way more interesting to talk about, frankly, is the work that they do. And you show you're already really thinking about it, you're buzzing about it, you're engaged with it. That's what they want to see. Because if they're going to hire you, this is the work you're going to be doing. Now, the wow factor. You've asked about the bio. You asked about the company. Now look to the industry. Show, in this case, the grocery biz. You know, show that you've been studying up on the industry. You know where it's headed. And you're curious how the company fits into it. You want to know what they think about something in the news. Whatever the industry, go to the industry niche blogs. Read up. If, it, if you're changing industries, you better be a quick study. If you're already in the industry, prove you're really up on things. Speak to somebody like they're a peer, not that they're just a boss who's staring down at you from the desk and you're like a wee little applicant. No, no, no. Even at 22, you are on par. You know the business. You're working hard to understand it. You don't have to be the expert, but you have to show you're, you've been thinking about it. In this case, I see Acme Corporation bought Little Corporation. The deal seems like a major shakeup in the grocery industry. What does the Acme Corporation takeover say to you? Again, we're not even talking about um, the company necessarily. We are asking sort of how they fit into the broader landscape. It's an interesting question. It makes for good conversation. It shows you are different. Now, the last question, I call it the inception. If anybody's seen that movie, just getting inside someone's head. You know, planting a seed taking it from an uncomfortable arrangement to a conversation, come with an idea, come with something fresh you've been thinking about, ways you could add value right now. You know, in this case, you know, I like the way your store offers online deals based on previous purchases. For me, it's a, it's a smart strategy. 
wouldn't it be cool to do a targeted campaign to reach people where they spend time online? Something that shows you know, you've been thinking about how you could add value right away. You've been thinking about their company. You know what they do. You know how they fit into the landscape. You have ideas. You're curious about the employer. Like Your head's in a different place in the competition. It just is. And when you walk out of that room, they're going to say, wow, that was somebody special. And that's what you want, to never be forgotten. As I said at the very beginning of this slide, to conduct yourself in a way that they can't forget you. And it's not having a huge IQ, making a 4.0. It's not about that. It's the soft skills. It's the relationship building. It's the in-between stuff. It's how you handle these moments interacting with people in the business world. That's what makes such a tremendous difference and puts you in a category all your own. Now, I know I'm ending a little early here, which I'm sure none of you will be upset about. I'm sure you have plenty of things to do. But I want to... Again, I'm happy to answer questions at the end, but I want to reiterate, these are some sort of little samples out of my newsletter. Uh, I have a section called Hack Your Writing, where I have words to delete, ways to edit yourself. I have templates, like the smart approach to a networking email. I even include news to impress your coworkers, as I said, as well as some productivity tips that I find useful out on the web. But you can walk in on Monday morning, and you know stuff that other people don't. And it makes you look like the smart one in the office uh, staff meeting. And the newsletter itself is just a way to really prime your week, get your head right, continue to improve upon your writing skills and your communication skills. I've been working at this every day for many, many years. I treat it like I'm learning a, you know, an instrument or a language or a sport. It's the same thing for me. And I get better every single day. And the better I get, the further I go with my career. You know, every success I've had with promoting my book um, and opening doors with my book comes through how well I can describe what I'm doing, usually in emails and also on the phone, and how I can make people take me seriously when they have no reason to do so. They're very busy, and I'm invading their space, and I need to make them care. And it comes down to what we do in those precious moments, in a live phone call, a live conversation, or in an email where once you send it, you can't get it back. Again, that's my Twitter handle, Danny H. Rubin. And if you don't win the raffle later this afternoon, I, I really encourage you to pick up a copy because I think it's going to be your, your buddy, your little buddy in the, new, in the business world. And it's just this helpful guide that is going to, you know, you can take ideas from me. You can apply them to the, you know, your own style, your own approach. But just the big ideas about networking and being curious of others and researching others and telling your story, these ideas will completely transform how you approach people in the business world. And I'm excited for you to apply these tactics to yourself. I know you're watching this, res this uh, webinar because you want to get better. Maybe you're applying for jobs right now, and you're hitting some rough spots. And I want you to be excited to go back to your desk and say, no, 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 I'm going to do it differently now. I'm going to prepare differently. I'm going to sell myself differently. And I'm going to get better results because I'm going to do what no one else is thinking to do. And that's going to make all the difference. You know, and with that, if there are no questions, then I'll wrap up a few minutes early. And Tim, if you want to hop back in and uh, and recap, you're happy, you're welcome to do so. Sure, Danny. There are a few questions that came okay. through that I don't think you can see, so I'll read them to you. Sure. Um, the first question is: I am a Spanish major, but I want to go into fundraising. Should I structure my LinkedIn statements differently to minimize the focus on my major? Okay, you're a Sp Okay, this is a college currently in college, about to graduate. Spanish Correct. major to one go into fundraising. No, so what I would say is, no, that, that's, that's your major. You, know, you can't run from it. It's going to be probably on your resume anyway. But what I would say is if you want to go into fundraising, do you have experience in college? Were you the treasurer of a particular club? Or did you handle money for this or that? Or did you take some courses in which you, you know, have, have experience in this space? I would say you're a Spanish major. That's fine but you hope to pursue the, the financial or the fundraising field. And here is some work I've done in school that prepares me for that. Now, if you've done nothing fundraising related and you're about to graduate and want to go into that, I would suggest finding an opportunity right now as you're in your final year of school to get that experience so you can add it back to your LinkedIn profile, your resume, your cover letter, so you have the experience that you can then leverage You'll have those stories of how you had to manage money, money went missing, money didn't come in, something happened crazy, and you were an effective fundraiser or you helped to raise this amount of money at an event, and 
you had to do this, this, and this to make it happen. You need those experiences. It's okay to say you majored in Spanish. I think that's probably a plus in the market, quite frankly, to say you speak Spanish, but then you have to be able to back it up with a concrete example of how you have found success doing fundraising. Great. The next question is, on LinkedIn, how much detail should you provide about each of your past job positions, and is a bullet point style recommended? Okay, so I do believe bullets are effective for LinkedIn. I, I basically think that your work experience on your resume and LinkedIn can be the same thing. That's, that's my approach. I don't think you, there, there needs to be a drastically different strategy between one and the other. It's the same approach. If you see um, what I recommend for resumes, it's just drawing on the experience of you know, quantifying successes and using key details and also describing, uh, giving context around the work that you're doing. Um, I think that you know, three bullets, maybe four is max for a job. You start doing too much and people are going to tune you out. It's, you have to decide what are the most important things people need to know about you if they just had a minute to scan through your career. Don't abuse their time. Don't have these giant lists of bullets or paragraphs. Stick to bullets, three or four max. Cut out the rest and decide for the reader what they need to know. Great. Um, are there any rules about the length of a cover letter? Well, look, you're not going to find like a definitive rule. What I recommend, what I showed you, is about three quarters of a page. And I think that's a great length. Look, the reality is, if it's good all the way through, the person's going to read it all the way through. And I think the three quarters of a page is necessary because you have, as I show you in those six parts, you have to hit certain spots. And you can't skip any of them. So that's the length that ultimately ends up being. I will tell you, do not go on too long with the story. This is, this is what it's all about today in the business world, is getting your point across faster than the competition. So you have to push yourself to say, how can I tell what happened in a paragraph? Or maybe take a big paragraph and cut it into two, but keeping it nice and concise because you don't want to go on so long that it just becomes like a giant cover letter and it defeats the purpose. But I think three quarters of a page is the right amount, the right length. It, it feels right to me. And when I get one in my hand and I'm reading it cold, it's like I don't feel like my time was wasted. On the contrary, I feel like my time was valued because someone told me a damn good story and also why they respect my company. Um, the next question is, do you think that the storytelling cover letter is also suitable for when applying for a government job? The reason for my question is that I read similar advice like yours at muse.com and have written very storytelling cover letter. Before I sent it to one government agency, I asked one friend of mine who works at one a government agency to proofread it, and she sent it back to me and said that it was too cheerful and dynamic for a government job. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, if that's not the most depressing thing you've ever heard about working in government. Oh, boy. Look, there's a way you can do it that everybody does it, and you're going to look like everybody else, or there's a way you can do it that's going to set you apart. Look, I, it's, it's hard to say if the person who reads it is like, I mean, we don't want to hire cheerful and dynamic people. I mean, is that the state of our country? Maybe. But I would never advocate you go back to the way it's always done. Now, if the government job requires you to do it a certain way, then you've got to do it the way they recommend. But I cannot advocate getting away from this strategy because you want to seem like somebody worth meeting. And the only way to do it is by using a story to prove your merit. And, and there's just no other way to do it. And while I don't want to hurt you in the job market, I... I have to think that doing it the same old way won't help you. Do you have any strategies for experienced executive level job seekers? Well, I mean, I still think it comes down to the story. In fact, I have, um, I meant to say this, so thanks for reminding me. In the book, I have a, a cover letter strategy for somebody with work experience. So applying a story from your job and how that has made you successful and how you'll be successful for the next company. So it's taking a, a real world experience in the moment, in the job, making money, doing business, and how you know, you're really good at what you do and you just proved it, you're going to do it again. So I think the story works on the same level. And um, I also have, in the book, I have LinkedIn uh, profile summary templates for the unemployed and um, recent grads and people in 
job. So I, I still recommend that you lead off a cover letter with a great story. It's not like a childish move. It's not a kitty technique, okay? This is not like only kids can do this. This is the way you have to sell yourself. I mean, you watch a sales presentation, they're going to sell you by telling you a story, an anecdote, a testimonial, a case study. That's how they're going to make you believe that they're worth your money. It's the same thing. So I, I don't have another like secret fancy strategy for executives. And if you're thinking that you have to just start trumping it up with all these big words and you know over the top language and it's like a you know like a business school case study, like that's just gonna people are gonna tune you out. Just be real, be authentic, be you, show how you're somebody that just gets stuff done. That's what people want to know. Great. Um, I think you've already answered it, but I've got like three questions in a row from people who have been doing one thing for a very long time or are planning on retiring and want to use their skills in a different sort of capacity. So does there any um, suggestions? What does that mean exactly? Um, I, um, one says that they were a lawyer and they want to use, it in a use their skills in a non-legal position. One person has been in, it looks like, um, the military for quite some time and now wants to focus their efforts on ah. volunteer service. Um, okay. And then so here's what I would yeah. do. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Tim. No, and the other one. Back to this. Go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. So for the, like, the LinkedIn profile summary, let me go back to this slide. Like, let's say you're sort of angling yourself for like this working professional part and you're going to say, you know, I am a retired veteran, served blank years in this um, capacity, and I'm looking to, to translate my skills into the blank field. Like that's how, that's sort of like your top line, how you're going to set, set it up so people understand like where you've come from and where you're going. Um, and I would do that, you know, if you're were a lawyer, you want to apply your skills. You know, I'm an experienced trial lawyer, I'm, and I'm excited, I'm taking my skills into like this new arena. And I'm, I've, I am translating, or I have translated my skills. I now, or who now focuses in. So use that opening line to tell people in a clear sort of who are you really? Like this is what I'm doing, and this is why the work I'm doing matters to other people and makes an impact on other people. So that's sort of like in one line you can you can sort of answer all questions and say, oh, okay, this person's former military. Now they're looking to do you know volunteer in this capacity, and then. You can get into the details about saying, you know, in the military I specialize in this and this, and now I, you know, translate those skills by doing this and this. And then your your closer line would be like, you know, it brings me great joy to be able to, you know, teach what I learned in the military to civilians in this capacity. Like that's you in a 30 second read. And people know exactly what you're about. And then this is, and I, I live down in Norfolk, Virginia, so we have a lot of military here. I've helped a lot of military folks translate their job history. Let me go back to the story. Um, translate their job history in a job application setting. They're like, oh, I don't know how to share my experience in the military. You know, you talk about soft skills, you know, leadership, critical moments, tense situations, war sometimes. You know, like really, this is like as real as it gets. And the, the types of skills that you've gained in the military to be able to translate that to the work world, like that is so impressive. Nobody can touch you on that stuff. So you gotta tell a story about how you demonstrated all those soft skills as a way to say, I am right for this job because I have all those skills you hope to have in an employee. Great, and we have time for one more probably quick question, and I'm going to sure. skip to this one because a couple of people have asked it. Can you fire off some quick um, tips on writing good emails? Oh, boy. Yeah, let me do this in <laughs> 30 seconds. You know, so many of the things that I've touched on today are baked into emails as well, being brief. Um, and a huge part of effective email writing is to make your point right away. Put your main argument, the main thing you want, at the top of the email so the person doesn't have to search around for what you're asking for. Like if you're asking for meeting somebody for coffee to ask for their career advice, you put that ask at the very top. You know, I'm writing you to ask if we can meet for coffee to discuss you know, my, my career path. Rather than put it at the very end and the person scanning around saying, well, what do they want from me? That's a sign of a clear communicator, putting the ask right at the top. In the military, they call it, B-L-U-F, bottom line up front. What do you need? What, what's going on? Let me know right away and everything flows from that. The other part of it 
concrete, you know, linking people to things. If you have a portfolio, a blog, somewhere where your stuff is stored on the internet, use those links to prove to people your ability. Never tell them they have, you have a certain ability without showing as well. You know, I'm constantly sending emails out, trying to build relationships for my own business, and I'm sending people, you know, a link to sample chapters from my book or a link to me leading a webinar or a link to me leading a workshop on video. I'm always sending examples. In fact, Tim even told me he looked at some of my video from my website of stuff I've done in this space so he could get a sense of me and know kind of what it's going to be like. People need to see you, you know, kind of experience your work, get their head around it. That's how they're going to trust that you're as good as you claim to be. All right, I think that is all the time we have. I appreciate everyone who is still on the line. Um, again, everybody will receive a recording of this um, presentation, um, and I will be reaching out to 20 people sometime this afternoon, letting them know that they've won a book and getting their um, contact and address information from them. Um, if you have any questions for Danny, you can certainly follow up with him um, either through his Twitter handle or his website. And again, go Terps. Um, it's homecoming weekend, so hopefully we'll see some of you out at the game this weekend. And everyone take care and have a great day.